I will never make you sad anymore. I will become your hero. Hello and welcome to another Hot Rocks review. Today I will be reviewing the fourth season of the anime series My Hero Academia. This season is actually the first one that I started to watch weekly. I binged the other three seasons because I never really bothered to watch My Hero Academia beforehand. One thing I learned is that watching this show weekly was painful, but I'll talk more about that a little later. This season adapted three arcs from the manga. The Shi Hasakai arc, the Remedial Course arc, and the UA School Festival arc. Then it also covered part of the Pro Hero arc, and these arcs were very interesting to say the least. This season started off with another filler episode, but I actually enjoyed this one more than season 3's filler episode, but it was still unnecessary. Seeing how both seasons 3 and 4 started with the filler episode, I can only assume that this is going to be the standard moving forward, and that just sucks since it kills the hype for the new season. When I first heard about this season coming out, I was so excited that I marked the date on my digital calendar, so I wouldn't miss it when it came out. I was so hyped and when I saw that the episode was a filler, it just bummed me out. My excitement for the season was just gone. But after that filler episode, the Shi Hasakai arc began, or rather picked up where it left off last season. We got introduced to UA's big three, and the standout amongst them all was Mirio. He is actually my favorite character in this arc. Seeing his determination to beat Overhaul and save Eri was very inspiring, and he is the embodiment of what a true hero should be. The only action scene he was in that I didn't enjoy was the slideshow with Overhaul, but other than that, he had some really cool scenes in this arc, starting with him dominating Class 1A last season and ending with him sacrificing his quirk to protect a little girl. Sacrifice is a crucial element for one to be a hero. They must be willing to put the needs of others before themselves. This moment proved that he was a true hero. But the amazing thing was is that after he lost his quirk, he was still able to fight back against the villains. Last season, Deku said, <laughs> And Lemillion did just that. He pushed himself and he never gave up so he could be Ares' hero. That is why he is my favorite character of this arc. Another enjoyable aspect of this arc was the increased focus on Kirishima. I always liked his character, but outside of the Bakugo rescue operation, he really hadn't had many moments that made him stand out. But his hero debut as Red Riot was both short and powerful. It not only made me interested in his character again, but it made me realize that the other students in Class 1A will have their debuts at some point. If the Red Riot's debut was this amazing, I can only imagine what the debuts of the other students like Bakugo, Shoto, and Deku will be like. I didn't enjoy Kirishima's battle against the two overhaul villains, Rappa and Tengai, as much as I enjoyed his debut. It had some good character development, but it just wasn't as captivating if I'm being really honest. Another character that was introduced in this arc was Sir Night Eye. He was a cool character, but his quirks abilities were confusing to say the least. This normally wouldn't be a problem, but it seemed like much of this arc was centered around his quirk, Foresight. From my understanding, this quirk has two abilities. Once it is activated, it grants Night Eye the ability to accurately predict his opponent's moves for one hour, and it can vaguely see future events spanning your entire lifetime. The anime only really explained the first part, so that left me confused when Night Eye talked about seeing All Might's death in the distant future. Also, I never really saw the significance in Deku changing the future that Night Eye saw. Throughout this arc, it was made clear that the futures he saw were unchangeable, so I somewhat understand why Deku changing that future was a big deal, but I guess it really isn't that significant to me because we don't really get an explanation as to how Deku changed that future. It seemed like Sir Night Eye and Deku aren't really aware of how it happened either, so that just makes things more confusing. For all I know, Night Eye's actions changed the future and not Deku's. One thing I did like about Foresight was the questioning of its true abilities. It is possible that instead of allowing him to see into the future, Foresight actually sets the future in stone and makes it unchangeable. It was a nice yet complex dilemma for Night Eye to deal with. 
The last thing I want to say about this character is that I didn't really feel anything for him when he died. I mean, I just got introduced to him, so there wasn't really any time to grow any attachment towards this character. I guess now there's only one other major event to talk about in this arc. The battle between Deku and Overhaul. This fight had its ups and downs. It wasn't my favorite, but even I cannot deny that the animation and art style was just amazing. However, that's all the fight really had going for it. When I watched it, I felt like Deku was just getting random power-ups for no reason. Like when he randomly increased his power to 20%, that wasn't explained at all and it didn't feel earned. It just felt like Deku said, I need to be stronger or else I'll lose and then boom, 20%. And the infinite 100% with Eri didn't really feel earned either. Looking back, it's not like Deku did anything spectacular to make Eri believe in him. There wasn't even any established bond or connection between these characters to make me believe that Deku's power up was fully earned. But overall, I did enjoy this arc. Overhaul was a pretty cool villain, and I even felt a bit bad for him once he lost his hands to Shigaraki. And I can't help but feel like the main purpose of this arc was to introduce Eri. I have a feeling that she may just be an important character in the future. The next arc, the Remedial Course arc, was the shortest arc of this season. It was only like two to three episodes and it took a brief break from the main plot. It somewhat felt like a side story, which was okay since it was very short. We also got to see some of the characters from the Provisional Hero License exam again, which was very cool. It makes them somewhat more relevant characters and hopefully it means that they'll have bigger roles to play in the future. Also, this arc links with the last arc pretty well thematically as they both focused on the acceptance of children. Deku and Lemillion were attempting to prove to Eri that they can be her trusted heroes, while the Remedial Corps students attempted to make sure that the younger generation doesn't go down the wrong path. And there's also a bit of really cool world building that got added to the series. This is where I learned about the quirk singularity theory, which is that as quirks mix and become more powerful, they will one day be too strong to control. That is why the children in this arc had quirks that were stronger than you'd expect. Another element this arc included was a conversation between Endeavor and the former number one hero, All Might. I was very interested in learning more about Endeavor and it seems like he is attempting to change as a person. I love redemption stories and I can't wait to see how he changes himself to make up for the wrongs he's done in the past. And strangely enough, although up to this point Endeavor has only really been portrayed as a monster, I somewhat felt bad for him. It's like he went crazy trying to reach an unobtainable dream and I could kind of understand that in a weird way. Overall, I did enjoy this small arc. I usually don't like diversions from the main story like this, but it was short and refreshing so I was able to just have fun with it. Like the previous arc, the UA School Festival arc also felt like a bit of a diversion from the main story. Actually, this season barely gave any attention to Shigaraki and the League of Villains when I really think about it. And while I did criticize the Provisional Hero License exam for feeling like a side story, this arc was surprisingly interesting and fresh. It was a nice and calm arc that kept to the theme of gaining the acceptance of children. And I really like that this arc expanded on what it truly means to be a hero. Before this arc, heroism mainly had been portrayed as physically saving the lives of people in danger and taking down villains who are hurting people. But this arc expanded on the idea of what it means to save a life. In this arc, Deku acknowledged that Eri wasn't truly saved until her quality of life improved, or in other words, until she could smile again. It was a nice addition to the overall story, and it reinforced the idea that Deku has a truly heroic soul since he actually cares about other people. We also got to see a bit of one for all training with Deku in this arc. 
I thought learning a bit more about the technical aspect to how All Might used this quirk was very cool, and it was even something that was somewhat hinted at during his last battle. We saw him shifting power from one arm to another rather than just powering up his entire body. Not to mention we also learned that All Might didn't struggle to control one for all like Deku did. He just got it instantly, which Deku noted makes him a natural born hero. I love that these differences between Deku and All Might keep getting brought up because it makes Deku seem like his own unique character and not a discount All Might. It also makes me believe that Deku will be different as a symbol of peace in comparison to All Might. The only thing I personally really didn't like about this arc was the villain, Gentle Criminal. Now I believe he was actually a well written character, but he was just out of place in this arc. This arc really didn't need a villain since the true villain should have been Ares Depression. His presence in this arc was just unnecessary and of course it made the arc longer than it actually needed to be. But like I said at the beginning, as a character he was amazing and he has a really wholesome relationship with his partner Labrava. Not to mention their relationship also somewhat falls in line with the theme of gaining the acceptance of children. Well, except Labrava is actually 21, so I guess she technically isn't a child, but mentally she definitely acted like one. And height wise she kind of just looked like a kid to me. And I also liked the quirks of these two villains. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Horikoshi's creativity really does shine through the quirks he makes. And finally, I actually enjoyed the school festival. When I watched Class 1A's concert, I was genuinely surprised with how much I actually liked it. It felt like I was actually there at the concert and it was obviously so much better in the anime than it was in the manga because the manga can't convey the sounds of music and the beautiful colors as well as the anime did. And finally seeing Eri smile was the best part of this arc because it indicated that she was finally saved. Overall, I'd say it was a solid arc Definitely not the best I've seen, but it was a nice change in pace. I hope that Aerie becomes a more relevant character in the future, and I am excited to see what is next. Season 4 ended by displaying the first part of the Pro Hero arc and it showcased a very epic showdown between Endeavor and a Nomu named Hood. It was very visually pleasing to watch, and I can tell that the entire animation budget went into that last episode. Earlier in the arc, it was demonstrated that the world would need a new symbol of peace, and it was somewhat implied during the Remedial Course arc that Endeavor wanted to be the hero whom everyone could have faith in. I honestly loved this character development in Endeavor. I could tell that the loss of All Might hit him hard as well. He spent his entire life trying to be better than him, all Might was his main ambition. All the atrocities he had committed to his own family was in pursuit of that goal. But when that goal was taken away, he had nothing. He probably had to do some major self-reflection to get to where he was in this arc. And I hope that there is more focus on that in the future. Many were unsure if Endeavor could feel the void that All Might left. And I also was not completely convinced as well. I always knew that Endeavor was a man who was a hero for the fame, glory, and power, so it was hard to see him becoming a symbol of peace as noble as All Might. But this arc just proved me wrong. As I said earlier in this review, sacrifice is an important element to being a hero, and Endeavor was ready to give his life to not only take down Nomu, but to also prove to the world that there is still a symbol of peace. And one thing that really hit me was that during the plus ultra prominence burn, Endeavor compared himself to the Nomu. Like he could see himself becoming a bioengineered human just to have a chance at taking down All Might. That's how crazy he was about this goal. To me, this just indicated a moment of self-reflection and it suggested that he was gonna change himself to be a better person and he yelled plus ultra high up in the sky where no one could hear him. So it was completely genuine. It was just an amazing ending to a great season. <laughs> Now before I get to my last thoughts, I want to briefly talk about the music in this season. Like the one that played when Deku saved Eri, the music during the festival, and the music for Endeavor's plus ultra prominence burn. 
this season really just went all out with it. And I really liked both openings for this season as well. My favorite of the two was definitely Polaris. Because when I listen to that song, I just feel Deku's urgent desire to save Eri. I remember that when I first listened to the song, I really didn't like it too much, but it just grew on me. And the opening Star Maker definitely shifted the mood. I remember when I first heard it, I was so surprised that it was so upbeat since we just got off of an intense and slightly depressing arc. However, the opening definitely catches the tonal shift of the show very well, and the music just makes me want to move. Overall, this season of My Hero Academia was not perfect, but I definitely enjoyed it. I'd give it a 7.1 out of 10. I had a lot to complain about for sure, but there was still so much I enjoyed about this show and I can't wait to finally pick up season five. I'm still wondering about what the League of Villains are doing. They didn't really get much screen time in this season at all. So it somewhat feels like they are becoming irrelevant, but nonetheless, my curiosity is still there. So I'll be looking forward to see what they do. And I am excited to see if Aerie will have any major roles in the future. She is staying at UA now, so that opens the door for many possibilities. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to leave a like and to prominence burn that subscribe button to see more of My Hero Academia content on this channel. And let me know what you think about this season in the comment section down below. I'll see you in the next life. Peace out.